Hey everyone, this lesson is on how to reduce the risk of diverticulitis. So we're gonna talk about a wide variety of different risk factors for actually having diverticulitis and what we can do to actually reduce the risk of diverticulitis and recurrent issues with diverticulitis. So to begin, I wanna quickly just talk about diverticulitis, what it is and what happens in diverticulitis. So diverticulitis is a gastrointestinal disorder involving inflammation of diverticula, which are outpouchings of the colon. So if you don't know what this means, your colon is your large intestine. And what happens over time is that there can be little pouches that form if there's issues with your large intestine or bowel structure or health. So over time, you can get these little pouchings like you see here. These are called diverticula. And then what happens is that there can be a piece of feces that can actually block one of these pouches. So there can be a piece that can block one of these pouches leading to inflammation. That is what diverticulitis is. And you might have heard of the term diverticulosis. Diverticulosis is just the medical term we use to say that you actually have diverticula, these outpouches on your large intestine. And when these diverticular or these little pouches become inflamed, that is diverticulitis. So those are the two terms and that is what they mean. So I want to first talk about the most important risk factor here. And the one, unfortunately, we cannot change. And this is how I'm going to start this lesson. The first risk factor for actually getting diverticulitis is increasing age. So increasing age is actually the most important risk factor. And why that is, is because as we get older, our bowel becomes weaker with age. So you can imagine the walls of your large intestine, the walls of your bowel become weaker, and they can have these little oat pouches, these things can pop out because the bowel wall becomes weak. So increasing age, most important risk factor. And it's more likely to occur in patients who are 60 years of age and older, but it can occur in patients who are younger as well. So this is, again, the most important risk factor, but it's unfortunately one we cannot change. But the rest of them we're going to talk about in this lesson, we can change. So these following risk factors are very important. So the first risk factor for actually getting diverticulitis is low fiber intake. This can lead to chronic constipation. If there's not enough fiber consumed in your diet, you can have issues with chronic constipation. And you can imagine your large intestine, your bowels are trying to push on this constipated stool. And the increased pushing and the increased pressure can lead to weakening of the large intestine wall, causing these outpouches, these diverticulate to form. So your bowel works harder and then becomes weaker. So this is a big risk factor for getting diverticulitis. So what can we do? We can increase fiber consumption. So we can reduce the risk of diverticulosis and diverticulitis by increasing fiber consumption. So you can get lots of fiber from different dietary sources like legumes, so beans. You can get them from whole grains, vegetables like broccoli, and other vegetables like peas, green peas. So again, low fiber intake, is a risk factor for getting diverticulitis because there's chronic constipation, bowel works harder, becomes weaker, and we can reduce our risk for getting diverticulitis. And if you're younger and don't have diverticulosis, you can actually prevent or reduce your risk of getting diverticulosis by having diets high in fiber. And again, legumes, whole grains, broccoli, and green peas are very good sources of fiber. Another risk factor for actually having diverticulitis or having issues with bowel or large intestine health is having low water or fluid intake. This again can lead to constipation, so very similar mechanism as to what we were talking about in the last slide. And with this, with water and fluid intake, it works with the fiber. So fiber can pull on and absorb the fluid to aid with bowel functioning. So what we want to do is we want to increase our water and fluid consumption. So increasing your water and fluid consumption can help reduce the risk of having diverticulitis in the future. So again, low water fluid intake can lead to constipation, and we want more water and fluid intake because it will work with the fiber, as the fiber will absorb the fluid and aid with bowel functioning. Another risk factor for diverticulitis is high red meat intake. So high red meat intake has been associated with increased risk of diverticulitis. The reason is, is because red meat intake alters gut bacteria. So you're gut or your bowels have certain populations of bacteria. And when you consume lots of red meat, this changes those bacterial populations. And when that happens, there can be issues with the immune system in those parts of your intestines. So this can lead to changes in bowel lining. So the lining of your bowel can be changed and the bowel health can be altered because of this. So what you want to do to reduce your risk 
of diverticulitis is reduce red meat consumption. So reduce or completely stop red meat consumption will help reduce the risk of diverticulitis in the future. So again, high red meat intake is a risk factor for getting diverticulitis because it alters gut bacterial populations. And there can be different changes in your immune system functioning that react to those types of bacteria, leading to changes in bowel lining and health. So that is the reason. So again, good to try to reduce red meat consumption because of that. Another risk factor for diverticulitis is smoking. Now, the reason is, is because nicotine from cigarette smoking affects the bowel contraction. So nicotine affects bowel contraction. This can increase your risk for having issues with diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. So what you want to do here is you want to reduce or stop smoking. So the best case would be to stop smoking entirely. So again, smoking is a risk factor for having diverticulitis and recurrent diverticulitis because nicotine affects bowel contraction. And what you want to do is you want to reduce or stop smoking entirely. Another risk factor for having diverticulitis is lack of exercise, particularly lack of vigorous exercise. So you want to really break a sweat. You really want to get your heart pumping. And the reason is, is because vigorous exercise likely improves bowel health and functioning. So the more rigorous or vigorous your exercise is, this can lead to improved bowel health functioning and reduces pressure in your bowels. So that is all very important. So what you want to do here to reduce your risk for diverticulitis is exercise. And when I say exercise, I mean vigorously exercise. Try to break a sweat. And that will actually help reduce the risk of diverticulitis in the future. So again, lack of exercise is a risk factor for having diverticulitis and in particular, lack of vigorous exercise. So you want to try to exercise vigorously to help reduce your risk. Also tied in with our last risk factor is high body mass index. High body mass index is also a risk factor for getting diverticulitis as well. More commonly, it is central obesity. So having a large abdomen seems to be the most important part of this risk factor. So when researchers have looked at high body mass index, it's mostly when there's a very large abdomen involved. So the larger abdomen may affect the functioning of the bowels. And what we find is that there is an increased association between high BMI or high body mass index and diverticulitis. So what you want to do to reduce your risk of diverticulitis is weight loss. So weight loss is always good. It will help with other things in your body, help with insulin sensitivity, help with liver health, and this is also very important. So again, high body mass index is a risk factor for having diverticulitis, especially central obesity. So when there's a lot of fat around your organs in your abdomen, and weight loss is the goal to help reduce your risk for diverticulitis. Another risk factor is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory use. So what is non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, or NSAIDs as we call them, N-S-A-I-D? These are our common painkillers. So things like ibuprofen, so Advil and Motrin, naproxen, and even aspirin. So using these more often, like ibuprofen, naproxen, and aspirin, can actually increase your risk of having diverticulitis in the future. There is an increased association between NSAID, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory use, and diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. So it's more likely with extended chronic or high level use. So if you can, it'd be best to reduce or stop your NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory use. So this can be more easily said than done. Many patients may have issues with pain disorders. So it's hard to tell patients to completely stop these. Reducing, if possible, would be great. And there's also other issues with non anti-inflammatory use as well. Increased use of non anti-inflammatories can increase the risk for peptic ulcer disease and even kidney disease. So it's best to try to reduce or even stop these if possible. So again, non anti-inflammatory NSAID use is associated with an increased risk of diverticulitis. So NSAIDs are ibuprofen, like Advil and Motrin, naproxen, and aspirin. And these again, can increase your risk of having future complications like diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. And you'd want to try your best to try to reduce or stop use of these. So I hope you found this lesson helpful and informative. Please check out my lesson on diverticulitis where I talk more in depth about all different parts of diverticulitis, including signs and symptoms, ways to diagnose it and ways to treat it. 
And also please check out my lesson on diverticulitis in different diets that can help reduce the recurrence or reduce the risk of diverticulitis in the future. If you found this lesson helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.